Okay, welcome back to the Corona Chronicles. We are still in chapter 14. Um, we have seen in the last couple of days uh, two angels uh, that are part of um, this sort of set of three, starting in verse 6. The first angel was proclaiming the eternal gospel mm. to those who live on, on earth and was saying we need to fear God and give him glory. The second angel simply said, fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great, and uh, was trying to tell the world, look, these powers that you sort of you live in and you think are going to endure forever are not going to endure forever. And then uh, the third angel now in verse 9. A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast at its image and receives its mark on their forehead or on their hand, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. They will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment will rise for ever and ever. There will be no rest day or night. There will be no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image, or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God, who keep his commands and remain faithful to Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labour, or their deeds will follow them. Mm. Yeah, so these second angels, the second angel and the third angel, are, are sort of saying one and the same thing mm. in, in many ways. So the second angel is telling us that Babylon the Great is fallen on the Day of Judgment. Yeah. But the third angel is really spelling out what that judgment is like. You know, not just for those who lived in the world system of Babylon, but those who actually worship the beast uh, and its image. And, I mean, the language is intentionally um, unsettling, yes, it isn't is. it? Yeah. Um, you know, the judgment is described in very um, powerful terms, which mm. are, are meant to uh, startle us. And that's that's right, isn't it? You know, so you've got this, they are... Uh, the wrath of God, which which isn't just, you know, God's anger is not just he's a grumpy, mm. unstable God who flies off the handle in, yeah. in a moment. His wrath refers to his settled mm. hostility towards um, all that is against all that is against him. And his wrath is being pulled, poured full strength into the cup, which is a kind of uh, an, an image of, of God's wrath being poured out, really. Mm. And then they will be tormented with burning sulfur. In the presence of the holy angels, it it it's picture language, and the language itself is frightening enough. Mm. How much more so the reality yeah. of of facing and and so this angel is trying to say, look, you you need to know that God is holy mm -hmm. and that He hates sin yeah. and that He hates the system of this world which is opposed to Him, and He is going to judge it in in the most in the most incredible incredible way um, and that is something that we just need to um, humble ourselves and pause and reflect on mm. um, you know one of the one of the things the Old Testament false prophets did all the time was to say peace peace when there is no peace yeah. uh, your affliction is not serious yeah. your disease is not bad don't worry yeah you know yeah. Um, Satan you will not surely die you know, it, yeah. all of it is a denial of God's judgment. But yeah. actually, we need to know that if we belong to this Antichrist system mm -hmm. and we die in that state, we are going to face the, t the terrors of God's, of God's judgment. Mm -hmm. And we, we just need to know that that's coming. Yeah. Um, and I guess it's, 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 a, it's, a, um, it's a, why it's a blessing that there are these angels proclaiming these things. Yeah. Because we don't know these things inherently. Yeah. I think I'm all right. Yeah. It was only when uh, the message was proclaimed to me Actually, Ben, you're not all right. Yeah. You, are, you are a sinner. God is a holy God. Well, I have yeah. no idea what a, I think holy just means like uh, wearing nice robes. Yeah. And, but actually, yeah. holy means completely, perfectly uh, set apart. Yes. Like unlike anything else. Yeah. Total perfection. And it's really difficult to, 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 underst to understand that without, being, without hearing the gospel and hearing you are a sinner. So. It is, that's right. And I think we, because instinctively we want to recreate God in our own image. Yeah. So how we often think is, 
um, well, here are the things that I value and think are important, mm. and here's how I would define love, mm. and then I project that onto God. Yeah. So God must be just a slightly better version of me. Yes. Um, and he, because I don't think it's right to punish anybody, yes. then God must also think it's not right to punish anybody. But that's yes. just craziness. You know, <laughs> I've got to take my cue from God. You know, yes. he's got to, I've got to let him reveal himself. Um, yeah. And as you say, look, we're not, we're not, um, you know, better than anyone here. And this is the beauty of the gospel because mm. on the cross, you know, we know that Jesus is actually drinking full strength well, yeah. a cup of God's wrath yeah. in our place. Yeah. So we, we deserved that, didn't we? Yeah. Um, Isn't that amazing? That yeah. You look at this, you're horrified by it. Yeah. And then look at the cross yeah. and actually understand more clearly what was going on there. Yeah. That the, 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 the equivalent of what was happening there is smoke rising forever and ever. Yeah. I mean, imagine that on yeah. the on the Son of God, who Himself yeah. was pure and perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who was all, all was in perfect relationship with the Father, drinking the full strength of the of the fury. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, praise God for His grace to us. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing, and and I think, you know, we're meant to read this, and it is meant to unsettle us, but it's meant to then point us back to the first angel, isn't it? Yeah. If that's true, mm -hmm. then I need to fear God and I need to keep his commands and I need to trust his son yeah. because, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to find myself, find myself there. Mm. Um, so that's part of this third angel's proclamation, isn't it? Mm. He's revealing what the judgment upon the beast and its worshippers is going to be like. Um, but then verse 12, you know, what, what does this mean for the God's people? Well, this calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commands and remain faithful to Jesus. What, what's, that, what's that about, do you think? Well, we, we know that um, we've seen from all the different scrolls being opened and we've seen from uh, the beasts coming out of the sea and the earth that there is torment on, on the earth. Mm. And we've seen that actually in, verse, in chapter 13, we saw that the beast was given authority to conquer um, sort of the world and, and Christians mm. as a result are suffering. Mm. But the encouragement here is we know how it ends, mm. so we can endure what we see now. Yeah, um, there is uh, safety and security because of the cross um, in Christians, and we also know that the, the, the sins sort of against us, the evil in the world, mm. is going to be dealt with one day. Mm. So mm. therefore, Christian, you know, be patient. Yeah, it will be resolved one day. Yeah, mm. and and I think again, although that may be difficult for us to understand because we're so comfortable. You know, if you imagine living, you know, in Syria or in some parts of Africa where you're a Christian and you know that in the next village mm. are militants who are going to come and burn your houses down and kill your wives and children because you're a Christian. Yeah. Um, there, there is a sense in which you are, you are absolutely longing that that system which is opposed to you would be wiped out completely. Yeah. That you would never have to deal with that again. And... God promises that that will be the case one day, and therefore we can we can patiently endure as you know as, as difficult as it might be. Um, and then in verse thirteen, then I heard a voice from heaven say, "Write this: Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on." Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labour, for their deeds will follow them. And um, you know, if you look back to verse um, verse eleven. One of the things that happens to those who face God's judgment is that they will have no rest, mm. but those who die in the Lord will find rest. Yeah. Um, and so, in the face of this judgment, you've got two um, commands to the saints, haven't you? You know, um, endure and be patient because this system is coming to an end, and know that your rest is coming. Yeah. You know, they won't have rest, but the Spirit says to you you will enter the rest of your master yeah. uh, one day and um, and therefore you can mm. you can keep going. Mm. And it's um, those who die in the law. Yes. It's not those who die spotless life, mm. who strive to follow all the laws and mm. because we can't do that. Mm. So it's simply are you in the law? Mm. You know, do you do you submit to him? Mm. Do you follow him? Mm. Um, are you counting on him? Mm. And yeah, you you need to, really. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so We've come to the end of a little mini section here in Romans 14. We've spent the last 
three, uh, uh, sorry, Revelation 14, not Romans 14, and uh, we spent the last three days considering these angels, uh, the eternal gospel, fallen is Babylon the great, judgment is coming, it's real, it's terrible, but the saints can keep going knowing that their rest is coming. And uh, we'd love you to join us tomorrow as we get into verse 14 of chapter 14.